Good morning and welcome to the Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill and this is Morning Prayer for Saturday, March the 26th. It's the third week in Lent and week five in the Psalm Cycle. And please join. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. O God, your foundation is in the holy mountains. You love the gates of Zion. Amen. Psalm 87, and please recite it with me. O God, your foundation is in the holy mountains. You love the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob, Leah, and Rachel. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. I will add Egypt and Babylon to them that know me. Behold, Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia, they were born there. And of Zion it shall be said, everyone was born in her, and the Most High shall establish her. You shall count when you write in the register of the people that this one too was born there. The people shall dance as they sing. All my springs are in you, Zion. Amen. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. O God, your foundation is in the holy mountains. You love the gates of Zion. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 47, beginning at verse 27. Thus Israel settled in the land of Egypt, in the region of Goshen, and they gained possessions in it, and they were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly. Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years, so the days of Jacob, the years of his life, were 147 years. When the time of Israel's death drew near, he called his son Joseph and said to him, If I have found favor with you, put your hand under my thigh and promise to deal loyally and truly with me. Do not bury me in Egypt. When I lie down with my ancestors, carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. He answered, I will do as you have said. And he said, Swear to me. And he swore to him. Then Israel bowed himself on the head of his bed. After this, Joseph was told, Your father is ill. So he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. When Jacob was told, Your son Joseph has come to you, he summoned his strength and sat up in bed. And Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan, and he blessed me and he said to me, I'm going to make you fruitful and increase your numbers. I will make of you a company of peoples, and I will give you this land to your offspring after you for a perpetual holding. Therefore, your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt are now mine. Ephraim and Manasseh shall be mine, just as Reuben and Simon are. As for the offspring born to you after them, they shall be yours. They shall be recorded under the names of their brothers with regard to their inheritance. For when I came from Paddan, Rachel, alas, died in the land of Canaan on the way, while there was still some distance to go to Ephrath, and I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. Here ends the lesson. O God, you have been our dwelling for all generations. Amen. Psalm 90. Please recite it with me. O God, you have been our dwelling in all generations, before the mountains were brought forth, and before you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us to destruction and say, Return, O children of the earth, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood in a dream, in the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows, and in the evening, it is cut down and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, and by your wrath are we troubled. You have set our iniquities before yourself, our secret sins in the light of your face. For we pass all our days away in your wrath, our life is over in a sigh. The days of our years are seventy years, and if by reason of strength they be eighty years, they are nothing but labor and sorrow, for they are soon over, 
and we pass away. Who knows the power of your anger? We fear the strength of your wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O God, how long? Have mercy on your servants. O satisfy us quickly with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants, and your glory to their children. And let the favor of the Most High our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, grant success to the work of our hands. Amen. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. O God, you have been our dwelling in all generations. Amen. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents, and do not complain as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Here ends the lesson. Now let us pray for the church and the world, for the mission of the church, that it may extend the peace and the love of Christ to all people. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Jennifer Ann, our bishop, for Brother Joe, our community servant, and for all of our church leaders, for all clergy and ministers, that they may be ever faithful servants of your word and sacraments. For unity in the church, that our scandalous divisions may be healed. For the poor, for the hungry and the thirsty, for the destitute and the unemployed, that we may share with them the riches of creation and free the world of poverty and famine. For Joe, our president, and for Doug, our governor, and for all the leaders of this nation, city, and state, and for the leaders of the nations of the world, that they may bring justice and peace in all the earth. That God, who's begun this ministry, may bring it to fulfillment. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Francis and Claire and all your saints, let us commend one another in all of our lives to Christ our God. For the intentions of those who've asked our prayers, and for all of your intentions. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Everlasting God, shine your favor and mercy upon us, and grant us success in the works of our hands. 
May wisdom ever grow in our hearts to the glory of your name. Amen. We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.